Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh-oh, let me test my audio. Good morning. You know, sometimes things happen, and today is one of those mornings, and I did not care. Uh, we were going to get in here, no matter what happened. Um, the thing shut out a couple of times. Just some stuff just happening this morning, but that just mean God about to be, God is about to show out this morning. How many people know that God can show out? All right, let me test this audio. Yes. All right. I can hear myself, so I know others can hear me. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but every morning I hear the birds chirping, which is really crazy today because I don't hear birds outside. And uh, for those that might be in other places, uh, I am coming to you live from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, we are having issues in the atmosphere. And uh, yeah, I'm, I was not even, um, not that I was sick, but just some things going on uh, yesterday. I got back in town and the atmosphere, the air quality was really bothering me. Uh, I don't have asthma or anything. And so we're going to keep on continuing praying for the people in this area that are dealing with uh, all of this air quality stuff, right? Um, but I'm saying, I don't hear the birds chirping this morning. Something's wrong with that picture. Yeah. But I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning. I have breath in my body. You woke up this morning. You got breath in your body. I need somebody to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, y'all hear me. Didn't mean to do that. I was getting ready to type. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody come on. Say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If God gave you the gift of breath in your body, how blessed beyond measure is that? Hallelujah. There we go. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Father, we just praise you right now for your goodness, your kindness, and your mercy. We thank you, oh God, Lord, for this beautiful day that we have seen. No matter what is going on in the environment, it's still a beautiful day, God, because you gave us life. Somebody didn't get this opportunity. Somebody didn't wake up this morning, but you did, God. You woke up this morning. You woke up this morning. You woke up this morning, God, and we just want to glorify you. We just want to glorify you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We just want to glorify you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify you, God. We thank you, God. We honor you, God. We love you, God. There is none like you, God. Nobody, nobody know how that can get your glory, that can get your honor, God. You, oh God, you, oh God, you are great, but God, you're our God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord, you're our God. You are our God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Lord, we just know, can nothing get us off this course because you are our God. Lord, I just praise you right now. I honor you right now. I praise you right now. I honor you right now. I praise you right now. I honor you right now. God, Lord, we praise you right now for those that are coming in and that is listening this morning. Those that might watch this in replay, God. Lord, that you are doing a mighty work in their life, God. Lord, we thank you right now, God, for salvation. We thank you right now for peace. We thank you right now for provision. We thank you right now, God, Lord, for healing, oh God. We thank you right now, God, Lord, for you just giving the things that we need because you are our God. You are our Abba Father. So we thank you right now for being able to experience the love of a father that's greater than any father on this earth, God. Lord, we just honor you and praise you. We glorify you, God. We don't want any rocks crying out for us, so God, we give you all the glory. 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 Lord, I just praise you. I don't know about you all, but I'm excited today. I'm excited today. I'm excited today. I'm so excited today. We just serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. How many of you all know that God is just good? 
God is just good. Matter of fact, he's better than good. He's great. He's great. He's great. Actually, I'm typing it in. I'm typing that in because <laughs> I don't know about y'all. I don't know about you this morning. We serve a good God. We serve a good God. We serve a good God. If God's been good to you, come on. Somebody shout it out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mm. Y'all trying to get me messed up this morning. I got a client call early this morning. So come on. Y'all can't get me messed up this morning. Again, we're coming in late. We apologize. Uh, promptness is so important. I told you something is going on with my body, but yeah, God still get all the glory. It's nothing but the enemy. I don't hear my birds chirping this morning. That's bothering me. Um, as I said, if you came in late, um, the air quality in Detroit is just really bad right now. Mm, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We just praise God. We just praise God. We pray over our atmosphere. Today, we're going to be talking about the battle doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to you. So stop looking at the battle. Stop looking at the battle. Stop looking at the battle. It doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to you. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. It's not your battle. I don't care what you see and what you're going through. The battle does not belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. And when we put it in that perspective, we can get some amazing things done. So we're going to talk today about Barak and Deborah. Again, I think I was saying last week, I wasn't able to get on. Um, I wasn't in my home office. I happened to be at a conference and uh, I wasn't able to get on because I was going inside the lobby of the hotel where the conference was every day praying at 6.30 a.m. I didn't know why uh, God had me do 6.30 because that was a real extreme, it was an extreme, did y'all hear me, extreme dedication to do that. I wasn't staying in the host hotel uh, first time in a couple of times, and it was bothering me that I couldn't be there. But God was testing my faith. He was testing some things. So I had to drive an hour. That was just the, the real, that wasn't like an hour in traffic. No, I was literally an hour away. <laughs> uh, I was 57 miles from the guest hotel, but I did it. I went every day, every day without fail. I listened to what God told me to do. And I stood in the lobby and other people that was in the conference, we also stood in the lobby and we prayed and we watched God move. He moved in the miraculous. Do you hear me? He moved in the miraculous. God blessed me from the time I got off that plane and I got the rental car. He gave me an upgrade. Every day, something miraculous happened. Every day. We were praying with people and the miraculous happened. And I'm not talking about no little bitty things. I'm talking about some big things that God was doing. One person asked God, uh, came in the prayer group and said, I need God to do a $5,000 blessing. She got $10,000. Do y'all hear me? And I saw it. I was right there when it went into her Stripe account. Y'all hear me? She got $10,000. Other people were blessed with different things that they were asking for, blessed in their body. I got healed. I got a blessing within two, uh, two days. It was a high four-figure blessing. I was blessed mm, from the time I told you I dropped to the time I got and that, that conference ended. I was blessed. I was blessed even going to, to, to my departing flight. Now, y'all know Atlanta Airport. Atlanta Airport ain't no joke. You can't just get to see. I can sometimes arrive at Detroit Airport uh, an hour before and get through that airport. Okay? But Atlanta Airport, oh, it, it, it no such thing. No such thing. I've never been able to do it. I got to my door, to my gate in 45 minutes, and I had to check my bag. <laughs> 
<laughs> Do y'all hear me? Do y'all hear me? I had to stand in the line for a check bag. It was only one person in the line in front of me. I've never had that happen ever, ever. But I was just praying, praying for other people. And God was just really, really showing his hand. So I just want you to know I've been in a battle lately, but the battle does not belong to me. Let's get into that. Y'all see those soldiers? Yeah, those soldiers are there to show you, to demonstrate to you that God ain't joking. God is not joking. The battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. You hear me? The battle belongs to the Lord. It's not your battle. Let go of it. Let's go. All right. We're going to come out of Judges, the fourth chapter, and I'm going to give you some backdrop to it. And we're going to go quickly and go ahead and get on so you can start your day. Thank you for again joining Kingdom Influence Global Ministries. I am your excited minister for today, Evangelist Bridget Jackson. Listen, Judges 4, 1 through 3 says, But the Israelites again did evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the land of Jabin, king of Canaan. The Lord sold them into the hand of Janan, the king of Canaan. Do y'all hear me? They messed up. So there was a consequence. See, sometimes we don't want consequences when we do things, but sometimes there's a consequence, but sometimes you don't even have to do anything in the case with Job. Job was upright. He was minding his own business. And guess what? God just had to show the might of his power and use Job to do that. So he see they uh, reigned in Hazar, the commander in his army of Sisera, who lived in Horaseth, Hagonim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. All right? They didn't done their mess, but they had enough sense to cry out to their Abba Father. Jabin had 900 iron chariots and had oppressed and tormented the sons of Israel severely for 20 years. For 20 years, they're going through this crazy mess. Y'all hear me? Mm. Can I tell y'all something? For 20 something years, the enemy has tried to be on my neck. Now, mind you, he ain't been able to do everything crazy, but it's some things that God promised me 20 years ago, actually 22 years ago, that I'm still waiting on. And they're coming to pass right now. Y'all see the smile on my face? They're coming to pass. So I need you to not get weary in well-doing. Judges 4, 4 through 5. And Deborah, the prophetess, the wife of Lipheth, she judged Israel at that time. So she was a judge. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came to her for judgment. So she was like Samuel. She was giving out the wisdom of God. She was a woman. Y'all hear me? Now, this was unheard of during this time. She's reigning in position. Then she said, Barak. Again, I shared with you all. Sometimes our culture has called him Barak. The name is Barak. Son of Abinom from Kadesh and Nephtali said to him, it has become clear that God, the God of Israel, command you to go to Mount Tabor and prepare for battle. Sometimes we get, we get a word to prepare for battle. Now, she's telling him you need to prepare for battle. So, of course. He's going to go prepare for battle. Take 10 companies of soldiers. A company was a thousand. So he needed to take 10,000 men from Natali to Zebulun. And I'll take care of getting Sisera. Now, that was the leader of Jabin's army, right? And they're trying to get down to the Kishon River. And with all his chariots and troops, and I'll make sure... You win the battle. I'm going to read that one more time for the people in the back. And I'll make sure you win the battle. 
Now, Deborah is talking to Barak and she's telling him what God said. God said, I'm going to make sure you win the battle. For those of you that are in a battle, whether the battle is a spiritual battle, whether the battle is a health and a wellness battle, it is a physical in your body battle, whether it's a mental battle, whether it's a financial battle, whether it's a career battle, whatever the battle is, your God said, I'll make sure you win the battle. So what does that mean? I think that means it's not your battle. The battle doesn't belong to you. It's already rigged. It's rigged. Okay, they do kind of battles. Well, I don't know. Some of these battles might not have some integrity. But this battle really ain't fair. Because he had assured them they were going to win the battle. Verse 7. They're going to win the battle. So Barak says, if you go with me, I'll go. Wait, 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 wait. God done already said you're going to win the battle. So you got to take me with you? He said, but if you don't go, I won't go. Mm. I just need to lay in that for a minute. I just need you to lay in that for a minute. He says to her, if you go with me, I'll go. If you don't go with me, I won't go. But God just said, go to battle. Take you 10 companies with you. 10, 1,000 people in a company. So 10,000 people. Go and take 10,000 people. But you ain't going to go unless me, one little me go. When God tell you to do something, don't give him your stipulations. Go and do what he said, because it's not your battle. So she said, of course, I'll go with you. But understand that with an attitude like that, there'll be no glory in it for you. God will use a woman's hand to take care of Sisera. You hear me? Stop telling God what you're going to do. I have to say, out your net. I just said it over and over and over again, multiple times in my life. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that, God. And sometimes you in the wilderness longer. You see, the children of Israel did not, you hear me? They were hard-headed. They were stubborn. They were stiff-necked. And because of it, 40 years, that should have took them. A little bit over a month. Do you hear me? Who likes prolonged things? Not because God has did the prolonging, but prolonged because you did it yourself. So I just need you to have obedience. That's better than sacrifice. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but somebody really needs to hear that. You're giving God your stipulations. Can I testify? I was giving God my stipulations. I was telling God, God, I'm going to do this. God, I'm going to do that. God promised me a husband that would love me like Christ loved the church. I was busy trying to help him. Blundered for a couple of years. That was horrible. And then when my king, my prophet, my priest, my Lord, my leader of my life. And that's Lord with a lowercase L. I'm not putting my husband over God, but he is my head. My head couldn't come into my life because I was trying to do it Bridget's way. Barak said, if you go with me, I'll go. But if you don't go, I won't go. After God said, Go. The battle is yours. I just need y'all to stop doing it your way and do it God's way and watch God work. For me, when I was trying to do it my way, I was stuck in that battle for an extra four years. But when I decided to give up and release, God put my husband 
in or put me in my husband's path. You hear me? And we've had a beautiful marriage for the past 14 years. God is just amazing. So, and Deborah said to Barak, up, for this is the day in which the Lord have delivered Sisera into thine hand. All right. God's about to do it, y'all. And it says, not the Lord, is not the Lord gone out before thee? She got to tell him again. Because he tripping over there. Talking about if, if, if. There is no if when God's give you a, God gives you a commandment. So Barak went down from the Mount Tabor and the 10,000 men after him. Him and his, his, his team, they ready to go. They're ready to go. When God releases you to get ready to go, I need you to go. Then we get over. So that's the story. Okay. That's verse 14. But that is not the end. So we know that they actually win the battle. They win the battle. The rest of the story, I didn't drop all the scriptures in there. So in the in the battle, uh, they defeat them. They kill everybody, right? They they get to the point where they get everybody. But let me go back to the beginning so you can see what God said at, at the beginning scripture. So remember, he's telling them, I need you to get the commander. He's telling them all of the back stuff. So Jabin, king of Canaan, and he says, and the commander of his army, Sisera, I'm going to, to, to put them in your hand. Okay. Because they cried out to the Lord for help. So that's why the Lord helped them. But Jabin had 900 iron chariots. He was a bad man. Look, and he had all of uh, the physical help to help him. But he tormented the children of Israel. And even though they did wicked, God got tired of it. And you know what happened? Oh, God had to deal with Jabin. God had to deal with Sisera. God had to deal with them because he was like, wait a minute. You ain't, you ain't going to keep on doing this to my babies. You know, I hear them. They might be, how many of y'all are like that? You got uh, people, you know, you, you got stuff that happened with your children, but you don't care. I don't care what it looked like. My kids can act crazy, but they my kids. And so that's what God was doing with them. So he had forbidden them uh, to do some of the things that they were doing and they were doing it anyways. And he was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's get this right. Let's get this right. I need y'all to do what's right. And so God was constantly, constantly dealing with them. Right. So I'm going to go. I'm, I'm pulling in my Bible because I want to read this. I wasn't going to do it. I was going to keep this short and quick, but somebody needs to hear this. So let me get to, to that scripture. It says, verse 14, then Deborah said to Barak, go, for this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down into Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. At Barak's advance, the Lord routed. Do you hear me? He routed. This is verse 15. See, I didn't put verse 15 in here. Verse 15, and he routed Sisera and all his chariots and the army by the sword and Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. So now he running. The enemy is running. See, when you put the word of God on the enemy, he got to run. So no matter what you're going through, whatever kind of battle, again, spiritual battle, physical battle, emotional battle, if it's mental, listen, 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 financial, put it in God's hands. So I can't make this stuff up. I told y'all, I told y'all was going in the lobby. If you came in late, go back and listen to the beginning. I'm not going to go through all of it. But I was just in Georgia. I was at a, a family member's home, but God sent me to be in the lobby of the hotel of the conference I was at every day at 6.30. Well, didn't get there because of some traffic stuff, but we started by 6.45, .45. but I was in route. I had to get up at four o'clock in the morning. God was tired. Because that conference went. We didn't end some nights till 10, 11. Well, I ended. Some people were still there. But he said, get and be, be, be obedient and get in the lobby. Others joined. The first day, I think it was about 10 of us, 11 of us. 
And we stood in that lobby and somebody beseeched God for a blessing, asked God for $5,000 financial blessing. And within three hours, they had 10,000. Do y'all hear me? Let me look at, look at me in this camera. I can't make this up. So here in verse 15, and at Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera and all of his chariots and the army by the sword. God will get rid of everything that is an enemy to you if you allow him. Verse 16, Barak pursued the chariots and the armies as far as, I mean, he went all the way to where they were, right? And the troops fell by sword and not a man was left. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of jail, the wife of Heber, a Kenite, because there was an alliance between the king of Jamin and the family of Heber, the Kenite. So they had an allegiance. And because they had an allegiance, here we go. Sisera then ran into this uh, man's home, but his wife entreated him. And she said, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Commander. Lay down. She laid him down. Do you need anything? He said, I'm thirsty. Can you bring me some water? She brought him some water. Is there anything else? He said, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. We get down to, to verse 21. Judges 4 and 21. But Jael, Heber's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him while he was asleep, fast asleep. And she drove the pig through his temple and he died and he died. So Barak didn't even have to kill his enemy. God had somebody else take care of it. So don't get upset and don't get mad when you got an enemy and it looked like the enemy coming in like a flood. And the enemy looks like he's getting the best. Remember, they were taunted for 20 years. It said tormented was the scripture. Verse one said they were tormented. I don't care what the torment looked like. You got a great big God. If you got your body is racking in pain, this dis-ease is trying to take over your body. Nothing is bigger than God. Nothing is bigger than God. Nothing is bigger than God. If you're being tormented or you're watching your loved ones be tormented mentally, nothing is bigger than God. If your finances are out of rack, you don't know what you going to do. Nothing is bigger than God. I told you some of my battles started a little bit over 20 years ago. I remember only having a hundred dollars in my wallet, four children, two mortgages. Car note and a hundred dollars. But do you know I would go to church? And I don't know y'all, any of y'all know about that Pentecost handshake. And somebody would shake they, my hand and money exchange would happen. And it would be exactly what I needed for this or for that. One time my brakes went out. I didn't even know my brakes was going to go out. And my mentor said, Bridget, come ride with me. We're going to go baptize somebody at the church. We get to the church. Another minister and already baptized them. So she said, come on, ride with me. She pull up at the ATM to get her daughter some money. And she gets out some extra money. And she puts it in my hand. It's over $300. My tires went out on my, I had an SUV at the time, an expedition. You know that stuff is expensive. And it was exact amount of money. Do y'all hear me? My friend stood in the lobby and said, I need a miracle, Bridget. And I need a big miracle. I have another friend that she says she needs a six-figure miracle. We sat in that car and prayed to God. If you are your father's child, just know your father said, let me go back to that. In fact, let me go back to that. And we're going to close out. Your father said, there we go, verse seven, and I'll make sure you win the battle. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Our topic is, 
The battle doesn't belong to you. The battle don't belong to you. Let me do this closing so we can get out of here. Deuteronomy 20 and 1, King James Version. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses, chariots, and people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. If God has done it before, he can do it again. If you are a baby in the Lord and you've never had the opportunity to see God's hand work, well, the first time he can work. Let me tell you, he is your God. The battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. You don't have to fight. You don't have to try to fight because the battle belongs to God. The battle doesn't belong to you. So whatever you're going through, don't believe the report. Don't believe the enemy. Don't believe the situation. Keep believing God. Father, we praise you right now, God, Lord, for this word that you have given. Lord, I thank you right now for what you're doing in the spirit realm, even right now. Lord, I praise you for pulling down strongholds, evil imaginations, and everything that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Lord, I praise you right now because you, oh God, are God. You, oh God, are God. You, oh God. God and ain't nobody like you. Nobody like you, God. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Nobody know how can get your glory, God. Nobody can get your glory, God. Nobody can get your glory, God. We give it all to you and we thank you, God, because we know this battle is not ours. It's rigged. It's rigged. It's set up. It's set up. We already know when we read Genesis. Uh, Lord, that the beginning, everything you said, let there be, let there be, let there be. And in the end, in revelations god you said we win we are victorious over the enemy god he has no no power and no authority we just thank you right now god lord for you being you have your way today have your way today have your way today we praise you for listening whether you're wish listening live or you have listened in the replay if you happen to watch in the replay or if you're watching a live and you just sit there and you don't say nothing come on come on come on somebody say something speak Speak your blessing. You see, see what happened while my friend was blessed instantaneous with five figures. You hear me? She got a five figure blessing within three hours, within three hours. Y'all, I, I don't know if y'all can. There was a drought. She needed something major. She had not had it. And God went bloop, 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 bloop. And that didn't even it. She got some other stuff that God blessed her with. I can't even go all into it. But the reason why she was blessed, because she opened her mouth. Come on, come on, I need somebody. When you're listening to this, open up. Open up your mouth and let God. I'm telling you, this is a season for us watching the miraculous happen. Signs, wonders, and miracles will happen. I'm two minutes over. I apologize. And I came in late. And again, I apologize. Just different things happen. Even technical issues happened this morning. As you see, I still don't even have my voice back, but God is good. God is absolutely, absolutely good. Amen. Amen. I see you next Thursday, next Thursday, same time, 6 a.m. here on whether you're watching on Facebook or whether you're watching on YouTube. Uh, catch us every, every Thursday at 6 a.m. for early rise Bible study, early riser Bible study. All right. Uh, this is kingdom. Mm, this is kingdom influence global ministries. I am Angelus Bridget Jackson. It has been great to be with you today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Love you. Love you. Love you with the love of Christ and ain't nothing you can do about it. I'll see you all next week.